The SpaceX Starship program is a thrilling showcase of the fail fast, learn faster mantra, where each rocket explosion is not just a setback, but a stepping stone toward groundbreaking innovation. Having mastered the Raptor engine's design through relentless experimentation, SpaceX has now set its sights on revolutionizing heat shield technology. Gone are the days of conventional ceramic shields. The company is boldly venturing into uncharted territory with cutting-edge metallic heat shields. But that's not all. These metallic marvels are designed to incorporate advanced technology to enhance system efficiency, something never before seen in the rocket industry. This daring leap not only redefines thermal protection, but also elevates rocket design to unprecedented heights. Find out everything in today's episode. Flight 6 marks a pivotal moment in SpaceX's journey toward Mars colonization, particularly the reusability of the upper stage. While some debates persist around Super Heavy's performance, the progress with SHIP was undeniable which is what we see clearly the most in the thermal protection system. Following the Flight 5 launch of SpaceX's Starship, significant issues with the aluminum-coated heat shields were revealed. These shields, installed on both sides of the spacecraft, were unable to withstand the extreme temperatures experienced during re-entry. The aluminum melted, and the stainless steel hull showed discoloration due to thermal stress confirming that the aluminum coating was inadequate for the intense heat conditions. Flight 6 was even harsher when the whole shield in certain areas on Ship 31 was removed, allowing SpaceX to push the boundaries of rocket design. As the vehicle descended, the world held its breath as witnessed something unprecedented. Portions of the spacecraft's surface transformed into a mesmerizing bluish hue. This suggests that the temperature in the tile-free zones exceeded 600 degrees Celsius, which is also the melting point of aluminum. This is the result of oxidation rather than just thermal discoloration, given that 304L stainless steel on Starship contains high chromium content, significant nickel, and extremely low carbon content. As the natural self-protective mechanism of the steel under heat, 304L stainless steel reacts with atmospheric oxygen forming a chromium-rich oxide layer on its surface. This seems to be a particularly tense moment as the Starship team watched the thermal readings climb past expected thresholds. They had to make split-second decisions about whether to continue the experiment or abort. Fortunately, Starship made a safe landing in the Indian Ocean and remained intact despite the rough landing trajectory. SpaceX engineer Kate Tice said on the live stream for the event, Turns out the vehicle had more capability than our calculations predicted, and that is why we test like we fly. However, after the launch, Elon Musk revealed a problem with TPS. The biggest technology challenge remaining for Starship is a fully and immediately reusable heat shield. This stems from his observation in all six tests. Ceramic used to be the sole option for SpaceX in producing Starbrick and it eventually has become its Achilles heel. They're fragile, expensive to produce, and require extensive maintenance. So this is where the metallic tiles come in, representing a fundamental shift in how we think about spacecraft protection. Crafted from advanced alloys with extraordinarily high melting points, these shields offer unmatched durability and resilience. Unlike ceramic tiles, Metallic shields can endure multiple re-entry cycles with minimal wear and tear, aligning perfectly with SpaceX's ambitious vision of creating a fully reusable spacecraft. However, for metallic heat shields to become a viable reality, SpaceX must tackle a critical engineering challenge, the effective thermal management of the shields. The development of these metallic shields hasn't been without its dramatic moments in its early testing in Flight 5. Six aluminum-coated heat shield tiles on the ship's side melted during re-entry. Rather than considering it as a setback, the team leveraged these findings to improve the design with what so-called liquid film cooling. Liquid firm dissipates heat, thus the material actually becomes stronger under thermal stress. 
this could indeed be a promising new approach to addressing the challenges posed by the current heat shields. Liquid film cooling is a thermal protection technique that involves introducing a coolant fluid to form a thin layer over a surface to shield it from intense heat. Its mechanism of action is very simple. The coolant fluid is released through small holes or slots in the surface, known as film cooling holes. The fluid is directed along the walls to create a protective layer between the surface and the hot gas stream. Using tiny holes and liquid water or propellant to cool the surface has never been seriously proposed or tested before. While the general idea might have been thought of in the past 50 to 100 years, no significant research has been done on transpiration-cooled metallic heat shields. Metallic thermal protection systems themselves are already rare and largely untested in modern aerospace. Liquid film cooling is commonly used in the thermal protection of liquid rocket engines and hypersonic vehicles. An ideal coolant has high thermal capacity and low viscosity, is low-cost, non-toxic, chemically inert, and doesn't cause or promote corrosion. Water is a common and efficient coolant used in recirculating cooling systems, but in Starship's case, there is a little bit of change. Instead of using water, SpaceX chooses methane as the ideal coolant. Elon said, when going to roughly 1750 Kelvin, specific heat is more important than the latent heat of vaporization, which is why cryogenic fuel is a slightly better choice than water. During re-entry, SpaceX's Starship faces extreme external temperatures that can reach up to 1,500 degrees Celsius. To manage this heat, the spacecraft employs innovative cooling techniques, including the use of water as a cooling fluid. This approach can lead to a surprising phenomenon known as snap freeze, which occurs under specific conditions. Snap freeze refers to the rapid transition of water from a liquid state to solid ice, often occurring when water is in a supercooled state. This process is well documented and involves several physical principles. When water evaporates at an extremely rapid rate, it absorbs a massive amount of heat from its surroundings. This is the latent heat of vaporization. The heat absorption is so intense that it can cause the remaining water to cool suddenly, freezing almost instantly. In harsh space conditions, especially within the narrow cooling channels of the heat shield, this can result in severe blockages, disrupting the entire cooling system. Anyway, before the innovation phase, SpaceX had already acquired basic knowledge about heat shields, thanks to what they learned from NASA's Space Shuttle program. The most notable thing is the similarities between Starship's heat shield and AETB, a material with a TUFI coating, and the addition of molybdenum disilicide, which was crucial in the final years of the space shuttle program. Indeed, examining Starship's tiles shows the complex presence, potentially of silica, alumina borosilicate, and aluminum oxide fibers, aligning with AETB. In fact, Elon Musk mentioned that the tiles are made from silicon and aluminum oxide. On the other hand, structurally, the Space Shuttle's heat shield tiles were known for their outer coating of tetrasilicide and borosilicate glass. Similarly, Starship's heat shield tiles have a distinctive black color. When you observe Starship during re-entry, you'll notice a beautiful blue glow of plasma surrounding it. This indicates that SpaceX likely uses a similar borosilicate coating, as borosilicate burns with a blue flame. Borosilicate is a type of glass containing boron trioxide with a very low thermal expansion coefficient, meaning it's highly resistant to cracking or warping under sudden temperature changes, unlike regular glass. Nevertheless, according to SpaceX's CEO, the heat tiles on NASA's space shuttle are not actually a reusable orbital return heat shield in real meaning. With extreme effort, Starship will eventually take reusability to roughly 100%. There are many tough issues to solve with this vehicle, but the biggest remaining problem is making a reusable orbital return heat shield, which has never been done before. 
the shuttle's heat shield required over six months of refurbishment by a large team, so was not reusable by any reasonable definition of the word. Such a long time of refurbishment mainly stems from the shuttle's complex shape, meaning that most of its 24,000 tiles were unique in size and shape, making production, quality control, and refurbishment a logistical nightmare. The orbiter's TPS wasn't a simple system, but a collection of heat-resistant materials, each carefully selected for specific areas of the spacecraft. For instance, reinforced carbon-carbon RCC, could withstand re-entry temperatures up to 1,260 degrees Celsius, protecting the nose and leading edges. High temperature reusable surface insulation HRSI, tiles made from Li900 silica ceramics with a heat-resistant coating were used on the underside where temperatures were lower. Felt reusable surface insulation FRSI, provided protection for areas with temperatures below 371 degrees Celsius. In the past, the Space Shuttle's thermal protection system posed a significant challenge in terms of time and effort. With over 24,000 tiles, each varying in size by about 15 centimeters in length and between 2.5 to 12.7 centimeters in thickness, finding or producing an exact replacement tile for each specific area was incredibly time-consuming. NASA reported that just maintaining the TPS in the Orbiter Processing Facility OPF, required up to 80,000 labor hours between flights, including QA inspections, repairs, rewaterproofing, and recertifying for flight. In contrast, Starship's TPS aims for a very optimistic turnaround time of about one hour and doesn't require such extensive labor. Starship's hull tiles are designed with nearly uniform size and thickness across the entire spacecraft. Only about over 100 tiles have unique shapes for specific areas like the nose and corners. While this might slightly increase the spacecraft's overall weight, it offers significant benefits in production, maintenance, and repair. This uniformity allows for thorough automation in manufacturing and quality control processes, resulting in simplified construction, shortened production times, significantly reduced costs, and higher reliability. This design also offers a strategic advantage for Mars exploration missions. The crew can carry spare tiles, allowing them to quickly and efficiently replace any damaged ones. This repair capability ensures the spacecraft's integrity for the journey back to Earth, significantly enhancing mission safety and success. This is a prime example of how simple design can yield enormous benefits in space exploration, embodying the philosophy of less complexity, more efficiency in modern aerospace engineering. Moreover, from Starship's Flight 5 onwards, SpaceX has focused more on upgrading the quality of Starship's heat tiles. Indeed, the company developed a new tile of heat shield that is twice as strong, or hopefully half as likely to crack or come off. They also added the ablative layers beneath the primary tiles as an insurance policy. These secondary tiles are made from silicone and felt meaning they self-cool by slowly disintegrating to expel heat. Some specifics on the ablative material SpaceX plans to use have not been made public. However, Elon Musk has said that this material is not good for reuse, but keeps the ship and its inhabitants safe in case the tiles fall off during or before re-entry. Fast forward to Flight 6, SpaceX continues to push even further with new secondary thermal protection materials, and this signs a non-stop evolution in Starbrick's development. In the future, Musk has an even more ambitious plan to build an entirely new supply chain for low-cost, high-volume, and yet high-reliability heat shield tiles. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.